Hey man, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm fine man, spending yeah. all my time in the studio. You know in this Corona days, we are just locked up. So writing music is the best thing to do. That's it man, what else are you gonna do? Drink? Yeah. Party always. always. Uh, yeah man, make some music, that's it, right? How you been? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Doing music is the best thing to do in these like lockdown days. That's it, man. How's Turkey? So, Turkey is fine, man. It's yeah. fine, but you know all the clubs are closed, and uh, so I don't think it will be okay on before the New Year's Eve or something. So yeah, and it's gonna be a bit, you know. I'm no doctor. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a little while till uh, things go back to any um, kind of like uh, anything similar to normal, you know, it's, it's, it's going to yeah. be, but hey man, rock out with your cock out, right? <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. What time is so it? Uh, it's 9.30. Okay, cool. So yeah. what time is it there? Here, it's 12.30. So... Oh, man. Just made my bed. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> Here we are, chilling out. Um, who did you have last show? Marshall Jefferson you have? Yeah, yeah, Marshall Who's Jefferson. Yeah, he's a proper cool guy. Yeah, man, come on. Legend, right? Yeah. Doing his thing. He says, yeah, he's all, both responsible for house music and the acid thing. And I, was, I, I remember you also started to start music with the acid, right? Well, I mean, I, I started with like hip hop, reggae, um, acid jazz. Um, are you talking about the drug acid or? No, I'm not talking about drug acid, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so, um, but yeah, man, I mean, like, acid stuff I was never that into. I, I've always liked Pierre, but, like, that's, like, the closest I'll get to, like, like, Wild Pitch is, like, the closest I'll get to uh, acid-y kind of stuff, you know what I mean? But that's, I mean, that's just his, his, his own groove so hard. Um, but yeah, I mean, Marshall Jefferson's been around for fucking ever, right? Just like... Yeah, yeah. Just that Since the start. What's that? Since the beginning, he's around. Sure. Yeah, man. You know? Fuck. Man. And uh, can you tell us about your 8-Ball days? 8-Ball is one of my favorite labels back in time. Oh, yeah. Uh, what I mean, you were a in 8-Ball, right? Well, one I, mean, of the I, legendary worked, labels. I worked at the shop from like... I don't know, like 92 or something, 91, 92, maybe, um, till about 99, 98, 99. So I was there for a minute. So I worked in the record shop. Then I started doing A&R for, you know, the label. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, just started making my own shit. And, you know, just, just like everyone, I guess. You just kind of naturally, like, you want to do a little bit more in the scene, so you start rocking out, getting some equipment, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, just building. But yeah, I mean, April was, dude, like, if they, the, one of the best things that ever happened to me is just having that situation, being in New York and working in a fucking record shop, you know what I mean? Like, it's like everyone's dream job, <clears throat> and I had it. So I like really, really, really like look at it like, like that, that kind of put me on, you know, like I was real young too. So, you know, it's just like playing records all day, hanging out with like, you know, selling records to Frankie, you know, Morales, um, Danny Cribbett, Francois Kaborki, like, you know what I mean? Like, these are the people that you saw regularly, you know what I mean? <clears throat> so, yeah. <clears throat> It was just a fly fucking thing <clears throat> to be, you know, <clears throat> working in the record shop, 
like just around music constantly. You know what I mean? Like, how could you not want, not want that? So yeah, I guess I was dead. Then I just I started signing shit. I started producing stuff. <clears throat> Manny Ward, we worked together. Um, <clears throat> who's still my homie? We still roll together <clears throat> pretty hard. Um, you know, it's just like I, like I said, like I, it's, it's like how do you explain like just being like in your teens and working at a fucking dope record shop in New York City. You know what I mean? It's like, what the fuck else? You know? Hanging out with heads that like legends. You know what I mean? Like, when I'm just a young buck back then. You know what I mean? Like, I did my thing, but, um, you know, there's a lot of heads, man, that really like shaped New York. And just to be around all that shit was just so dope, you know? So, but yeah, I guess I, I left in like, uh, 99, 98, 99, I started working for Satellite uh, for like a, about, I guess like six, seven months. And that's where I got the, the vocal for Hide You. Um, it was a drum and bass record. My boy, Christian Bruna, um, he got the promo. Yeah, the Koshin one. Huh? The Koshin one. Yeah, yeah. Koshin Koshin. Koshin. Yeah, so I, when I was working the satellite, I got that vocal. I, t I, t I borrowed the record off of my boy Christian Bruna, dope ass jungle DJ, drum and bass, whatever the fuck everyone's calling this shit this, these days. Um, and yeah, we, we rocked that vocal out. Then I started the label with satellite. Um, you know, just, you know this this project, that project, blah 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 blah. But what I was there in like '99, the satellite. But I kind of blew up in 2000. So right when I got the Hydro vocal, then I did Rapture right after that, and Forget the World. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was just kind of like, uh, like I, I wasn't at Satellite long enough because just my life just changed because of working on records and making some bombs, you know? So yeah, I was just kind yeah. of segueing into after eight ball satellite and then that kind of went into like the 2000s you know what i mean just like rocking the fuck out you know what i mean trying to just make dope shit so but me and steph were working together since like it's like 96 or something like that like you know we, my first record came out in 94 and it was done in 93 but you know it was acid jazz down tempo shit but uh me and steph had projects you know 96 97 98 but um you know once once we just kind of like linked up with john digweed through another person from satellite james bem he gave john digweed a cd of ours and john called the studio and it was like yo you should just fly after that it was pretty much on man it was just like all right dude, let's go how much and when's it due you know what i mean like let's make some dope shit and let's make some bread so the thing is, you are doing, you are doing, uh, in fact, New York tribal sound. But later then, uh, after uh, Steve Waller or uh, John Digweed get into it, and uh, it started to call the dark tribal or tribal progressive. In fact, it's the same music you were doing since since the nineties, right? Yeah, same I mean, music. listen, I'm I'm not the person who names it. You know what I mean? Like, it's whatever media wants to call, like, or Beatport wants to make new genres and shit for whatever reason. Like, me and Steph are making the same shit for fucking, from day one. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah, I know. of course, times change a bit, you know, like, but we've always had, like, a darker kind of New York-y tribal thing. I don't know. I never considered us progressive, but... Who fucking cares? You know what I mean? No, We're just making New York shit. Huh? It's definitely not progressive. It's definitely progressive. Because progressive is a more different rule. It's nothing to do with progressive, in fact. What I, I don't think. Know. What is progressive? Like, I hear progressive stuff, and it, it seems to me like it has a lot of pads. Uh, it's very dreamy and, like, deepy. You know, that's kind of what I consider progressive, but... Again, who the fuck am I? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I just never considered me and Steph's stuff progressive house. 
Um, yeah, I just definitely the people I that liked our stuff liked Progressive House, and we just kind of got grouped into it. I think, but whatever. Like, it, it, it get, like, does it even fucking matter? You know what I mean? Like, we do our thing, and that's it. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Uh, maybe some stuff like it's like DP progressive. Uh, who knows, man? I don't know. When I think of progressive, I think of like just these long pads and like dreamy, like drugged out kind of feel to it. You know what I mean? Like I think me and Steph always had like you know a really like New York thing in our music. You know what I mean? It wasn't like all padded out and just Definitely. like Definitely. yes. We always had that. What's that? You always have that New York vibe, that New York yeah, groove in I your mean, stuff. It's, it's the way it goes, you know what I mean? But I'm happy to have a New York vibe, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. definitely uh, a vibe I like. So, but yeah, I mean, heads, a lot of heads, like, I mean, would you consider Angel Murray progressive house? I wouldn't. You know what I mean? But, like, no. it's kind of, is Danny Tenegli a progressive house? You know, like no, I'm definitely not. right. No, so it's like I don't not. like we have similar kind of styles and sounds. You know, very New York. But it's like we, I, maybe because I put the album out with Bedrock, that you know we got kind of looped into the whole prog thing. But again, it's like it's not really a big deal for me. Like I just, like I said, I just never considered what we did progressive house. You know what I mean? Just New York shit. So, but yeah, that's I want it. to ask you one, one more thing. Uh, one of that? your tracks that I, I want to ask you one more thing. Uh, okay. One of your, for me, favorite best tracks is uh, Forget the World. So okay. how has it happened? How did you get a cappella? Oh, it's a great record. It's a I proper mean, dance it's a, it's a bit of a story. I mean, we, me and Steph, got asked to do a remix of that vocal in like the 90s and it never panned out like some shit happened so how it went is that the music that we did for forget the world wound up being lula the dj the music and me that we produced yeah. we gave her the music that we started forget the world with then we started working on the music of forget the world like seven years later and I guess we were like, yo, we need a vocal for these drums. And we just pulled that Forget the World thing out. That, like, had it in the computer from back then. And it just rocked out. It just worked. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah. So, the, the original Forget the World became Lula, the DJ, the music, and me. And <laughs> then we just, and it was started, like, yeah, in, like, 98, 96. Seven, like we started that record, but like we we just had it sitting around. Maybe late, maybe a little later, maybe ninety nine. I don't know, man. Fuck, I was on so many drugs and drinking so much. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's all a blur. But yeah, it's uh, it's cool. So that's how that came about. And then yeah, I mean it's Jim Morrison vocal. So I mean he's dope. So he just kind of like be a bit consistent and you have a dope vocal like that, your record's going to come off. You know what I mean? Like, it's uh, hard to fuck that one up. But I'm sure... Some Great drums. Great yeah. drums. Thanks, one of man. the best drums I ever heard. Definitely. Cool try. Hey, John. Listeners asking you if you can stop walking. Really. They are asking you if you can stop walking. Stop walking? Yeah, people asking you. Oh, I'm walking around. That's because I'm so tired, yeah. bro. I didn't go to sleep last night. I got I party with my homie, <laughs> drank all night. So I was like, fuck, if I go to sleep, I'm going to miss this interview. So I'm like, just keeping myself up, like pacing around. Is it bothering people? They are begging you. I'm <laughs> making people dizzy? <laughs> They are making you stop walking. <laughs> how's everything going though? How, how's uh, your new situation that you told me about the other day? Yeah. Everything good? Yeah, everything good. Everything good. Definitely, everything good. 
good. good. Yeah, yeah, everything good. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. We got some people online asking questions or just like heads just saying what's up? Sorry? You, are people online asking questions or like are people yeah. like following? Yeah, they're asking. They, oh, is that they just asked the you to stop walking. That's that? it <laughs> right now. <laughs> they keep saying stop walking? No, yeah. Shit. How about right? I jog? <laughs> Do, do a little workout. Some people, <laughs> people ask me sometimes in, in my interviews, uh, sometimes they ask me, what's the best track or one of the best tracks you ever heard or name a track that you wish you produced. And uh, I mean, always anything, I answer. Anything wild pitch, DJ Pierre, wild pitch stuff, like just blows me away constantly, no matter when. Like, it's just like, that motherfucker just has it, man. He's got his own shit. Like, it's like him, like DJ Premier. It's like, motherfuckers have got their own shit. Like, I mean, you can't get that from anyone else but them. So it's like, for me, anything Wild Pitch. Um, I mean, Angel Murray is like, he's got his own thing going on. He's just got shit that no one else can do. Um, super respect. But like, one song. Um, that I wish I produced or like a song that like really had a big huge effect on me was So Get Up um, Vibe uh, Rui and Vibe but uh, yeah, I don't that's, think I on. wish I produced it I, but it really did have a huge impact on my life and like you know when that came out when it was a promo and the white label Four Twisted had it or Tribal America one of them Shit, right? Yeah, I mean it's the same same thing, really. Rob De Stefano, right? Um, yeah, that's how I get into the New York scene. Uh, I did remix for So Get Up, and I remix? that's my first. Yeah, yeah. Oh no, I don't. It's on DJ White label. Yeah, I send that. It's on DJ White label. It came out though. Yeah, let me show you. You, you right. never heard of, heard of it? Yeah. Did you get paid? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you paid me. Nice. What, I, it I, came out I, on I, Chaos I, or Tribal America? All right, everybody. I'm no, going to no. take a walk just to the fridge to get some water. So don't trip. It's on Chaos. It's such a bright flavor. Yeah, this one, man. Was, oh, nice. Dope. This one. Cool. Yeah, that's how I started. Let me hear that shit. What happened? I, I sent it to you. You never heard it? No. Your mix? No. It's my best stuff. Till date, maybe. There's, my, there's some. I don't know. Um. Yeah. Well. Send send me a copy. Or I'll, I'll look it up online. I'll check that shit out. But yeah, that was a huge okay. record. Like for me, going to hear that at the original Sound Factory when Junior would play it, I would go with Manny Ward. Um, I mean it was. I mean for that club too. I mean the original Sound Factory, which I guess turned into Twilo, right? Um, yeah, no. But yeah, like that was like a huge thing for New York. That that club, you know, it was, you know, it was just dope. I mean, that's when I kind of like really started rolling in house music is, is when yeah. that shit was popping. You know what I mean? Like you go out at like six in the morning, you know, just to fucking hear that dope shit. And Junior was dope, man. You know, he, he got a little fucking wild with like, you know, the route he went and shit, but you know, he, he fucked, he had a major impact on New York. Danny, too, you know? Um, yeah. Tons of people. But, like, I think for me, Junior and Danny were, like, you know, like, up my alley. You know what I mean? Masters of Work, dope as fuck. But, you know, a little more groovy than, than the shit that I do and the sound I'm into. I mean, I went over to Funkbox the other day and Little Louis Vega's wife played. And she fucking knocked it out, man. The, on some old tribal, like, I was surprised as fuck. Not on the skill level, but, like, I was just like, yo, this is a motherfucking New York-ass party. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was dope. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, he's great. And also, Louis' wife is really cool DJ, I think. Oh, and her label is going really strong. Right, right. you sent me something to listen to the other day from her, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About her, like, I sent you. But yeah, she killed it, man. And it was, I was expecting a little, like, listen, like, I don't know. People say Af tribal shit, Afro house. You know, I mean, I just thought this shit was like, I didn't really consider it Afro. I just considered it like New York and drummy as fuck. You know what I mean? I was, like I said, yeah. I, was, I was surprised like that it was like a little, as dark as it was. You know what I mean? And like, you know, I'm, I, yeah, you I'm about, clubs, you I'm about out, generally I'm not going out to hear music. I'm going out to get fucking lit and see homies. You know what I mean? Like, it's not really to go hear a set. But dude, that, like I said, man, she fucking knocked it out. Um, I was super impressed. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, like I said, I don't go out that much. You know what I mean? I'm not even in New York now. So I haven't been in New York for like 60 days since this whole shit started popping off this Corona fuck. But uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I know shit's fucked up over there, but um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm like, ask me. Like, what's that? Now people ask me the same question: uh, which track you wish that you that you wish to produce? And uh, I always answer with your track. In fact, uh, the storm oh, really? is rising. Which yeah, track? it's one of the best. Like, it's so simple. Which track? Which track? And the storm is rising. Oh yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, wow, it's very really simple. You know I mean, it's, just, it's it's not like a huge record, but it's yeah, it's super simple. My homie Lance uh, wrote the vocals. Uh, Lance Jordan. Um, yeah, I, I think it's very really underrated. Who, Lance? It, no, oh, the, uh, the track is. Okay. The track, the track is very really underrated. You know, yeah, it, I mean, it deserves I, better. I think it's like when it came out. I just think times were like starting to change a little bit like things were getting a little like like techier you know what i mean heads all of a sudden wearing all black and like fucking you know doing ketamine again <laughs> you know what i mean like the fuck out of here um but yeah it's just i think like when that came out like the, the whole vocal kind of like big vocal deep vocally thing was kind of like not like passe, but it was like a little worn out. Like everyone was trying to rock these tribal vocal records. You know what I mean? So, I mean, heads get tired of shit. You know what I mean? Like, just like anything. But, um, but yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I thank you, by the way. I'm glad that you like it. Uh, it just, it, it did its thing. But like, it wasn't like licensed or picked up. You know what I mean? Like, it was just a cool fucking record that we did. But we did healing with the same singer. I actually like healing yeah. better. Um, but yeah, it's like, I don't know. I mean, you, you can put out records all day long. It's like, you know, there's a lot, a lot of things that go into it. Like, if you got a hit, you got a motherfucking hit. But, um, you know, you still have to work at, like, promotion. And, like, you know, with New York Love, like, I was just like, yo, man, let's put these motherfuckers out. And, you know, if, if heads like them, they like them. You know what I mean? I wasn't really pressed to be like, you know, trying to like make something to be like some massive thing. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, let's just make some dope shit and hopefully heads like it. If they don't, fuck off, like all love. You know what I mean? But it, we didn't put the work into trying to make these records like, you know, like just like marketing promo. You know what I mean? Like it was just like, let's do this and let's see what happens. So, but yeah, thank you. I'm glad you like that shit. I like it. I mean, I did it. So um, it's not my favorite, but I don't know. Like, if, even if I have a favorite, I mean, t I like Till There Was You. I mean, I like all my shit, but like, yeah, the t some, some, was you. some rock more than others. You know what I mean? It's it's just the same vibe, I think. Till There Was You and There's What'd you say? The storm is rising, and uh, Tid Darvazu has the same vibe, you know, same feeling, but I think. Of it, what? It, like, Till There Was You? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the thing is, Till till There Was You is 
is is a dope ass vocal. That's it's got a hook and a half. You know what I mean? The the writing yeah. the writing on that's really good. Um, so again, it's like that's the kind of record. Like, I mean, I guess you could fuck it up, but kind of tough to fuck up a good vocal like that, like Rapture or or Koshin. It's just like yo, me and Steph got lucky, I guess. Like, sure, we went after these records and and got it in, but like. Yo, it's 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 like you got a vocal like Nadia Ali singing Rapture, like if you come on, man. I mean, it's it's a hit if she fucking shat that record out. You know what I mean? Like, it's just dope. It's a it's a hit record. Um, so the work on it is, is super super cool. I don't think Till There Was You is like Storm Is Rising, because I think Till There Was You is way hookier. It's a, it's a it's a bigger record all over the place. You know what I mean? So, but again, like everyone's got their own, you know, like this is this and this to me, it's cool. You know what I mean? But till there was you, like, I really liked till there was you, the writing on that. Um, Rachel starts killed it. I don't know if she actually wrote it, but if she did, like she fucking nailed that shit. I mean, uh, you know, Rapture, Colchine, like those are all like, I mean, they're hooky. So, you know, I guess what make records for chicks. And then dudes will dance. That's like the old uh, old formula, right? If girls are dancing, dudes will dance. Mm. And then it's on. <laughs> like, then you have a fucking dope-ass record. I don't know. I mean... S-shaking grooves. Huh? S-shaking grooves. It's it, man. I mean, just trying to make fly shit. I guess everyone thinks they make fly shit. But, um, you know, some just make shit that's flyer than others, you know? Uh but yeah, I guess, I don't know, do, do people that make like this whack-ass trance bullshit, like, actually be like, yo, this shit is hot? I mean, I guess they do. Like, I, I hear it and I want to fucking run into a wall, but it's like, you know, everyone's got their own way, right? You're like, all right, dude, you know, people like Takashi, that fucking sucker, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so, you know. Guess so, the people. What anyway, you are yeah. Up to? Huh? What you are up to in these days? What I know is you did a Rihanna track. Uh, I mean, I have up all night with Noam Rubinstein, my new project. So I have like, uh, I don't know, like three joints out. Um, as up all night, and then I have a bunch of shit like ready to go, uh, signed to management, like. Yeah, man, just trying to do it, but like, I don't know, like, it's it's weird, like, you know, music is so, like, heavily marketed, and, like, it, it's a little bit unreal to me, like, the whole scene, um, like, to, to navigate through the music industry and be a part of it, it's a little daunting for me, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't enjoy that part of it, um, but, again, I signed the management, so <laughs> hopefully they enjoy it. Um, I, I really just wish it was like about music, but it's it's really not. You know what I mean? There's so many suckers coming off, you know, and making bread and doing their thing. And I don't give a fuck, man. You can think I'm hating, but you know, I grew up in this shit. Like it means something to me. You know what I mean? Like so, I don't know. I got this whole like you know vibe now where I'm just like, let's make some dope ass shit. But it's like, you know, records don't sell like they used to. You're not getting fucking bang from it. You got a tour. And then you have to play the game to tour, you know what I mean? Like, so it's like, all right, dude, like, what is this really? You know what I mean? Like, it's to me, it's a little bit like, you know, you fucking sell Pepsi, like, you know, Beyonce. It's all the fucking same shit, you know what I mean? Like, if it's marketed well, then, like, it can do well, even if it sucks, you know what I mean? Like, shit, we all know how much whack shit does all right, you know? So... I don't know, like my projects, they're, they're doing okay. You know what I mean? But like, what do you do? Just keep smacking them out, then have a bomb and then catch a tour. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. that's what you do. Cause you want to make that cheddar, but it's, it's just kind of a whack thing. Like, where it's like, I get it. You know, it happened to me. Like I toured off of, you know, 2000 to 2006, all those records I did, like I toured till, you know, I still do shows based on that work. You know what I mean? But I don't know. 
Like it's it's for, just for me. It's like it, it's it's just kind of whack that the industry goes the way it is. You know what I mean? You got kids like like I'm not against ghost producers. Like like, but I'm, I am against phony, and there's just a lot of phony motherfuckers out here. So the industry is just like a little bit whack to me. But maybe it would be less whack if I was fucking making thirty grand a night. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, up all night's my thing. Like it's about music. If it comes off, it comes off. You know what I mean? That's the goal is to reach more people. But uh, and then do shows and and make an okay living. But it's like I don't know, man. I fucking hate festivals. Like I I got crispy nights on. I'm not trying to walk in so fucking dirt and mud and shit. You know what I mean? Like it's just mm -hmm. not my scene. Like. I don't know, sound system all suck. And kids, man, I'm 46. Like, I don't really relate to, like, many, like, you know, 16-year-olds. I don't really kick it with them. You know what I mean? Like, running around, holding hearts up and shit. Like, fuck off, man. Like, it's, I get it. But it's like, I don't know. What? 10 years down the line, you're going to be like, oh, remember that? I'm like, yo, I'm still up in it. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's not a phase or a fad. You know, this is my life. But uh, I don't know. There's just parts of it I just don't like. Am I going on a tangent? Like, shit, I've, I've been up all night. So I got it in last night. So, yeah, go ahead. Ask me something. <laughs> so up all night defines you, right? I mean, last night. I mean, what are you going to do in quarantine? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm chilling. I, I got my things going on, but um, I don't know, man. There's, there's not much to do except, like, kind of get banged up and lit up. I mean, I work out, too. <laughs> Then I get lit up. Yeah, I, go to, I, I work out, lift some weights, and get fucked up. So, but, yeah, man, I don't know. What do you do? What, do, what are you doing in quarantine? I'm staying at home in my studio producing new yeah. music. And sounds sometimes exciting. sending them to you. Yeah. Sometimes sending them to you. And uh, talk about music with some friends like you and other friends. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's, you know, We are not shit, up all shit, night. shit's different, right? So, yeah. but yeah, I'm not up all night every night. I actually like the morning. <laughs> I love mornings because mornings. Yeah, that's impossible. Particularly in New York, the mornings are so dope because it's not like, infected with like fumes and body heat like you know you get up at, like seven in the morning in new york it's dope as fuck man get a fresh bread kick it things are a little bit slow moving you know but yeah things are a little bit too slow now but yeah i don't even know what the fuck's gonna happen man like what is what is gonna happen with all this shit fuck it i can tell you one thing last night's not the last time i get lit up either So it's like, <laughs> that's it. Um, <laughs> yeah, man. Nothing. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. This is apple juice, by the way. So. Um, yeah. I bet it is. I bet it is. I bet it is. <laughs> Last night it was apple juice and guado. Um, but yeah, shit. Yeah, after this, I'm going to go to bed. I'm just going to fuck chill. Maybe watch some Netflix. Um, I don't know, have a taco or some shit, you know? It's pretty easy. So you also, you also been to Istanbul? I've been to Istanbul, yeah. I like that. Yeah, I like it. It's a great party for FG. And do you remember it? Or how do you remember it? I mean... And how was it? I mean, I was on tour then, heavy, so... I mean, I played Istanbul, I played Creamfields, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and the funniest fucking thing about Creamfields, I, this, this is why I don't like festivals, because I'm just like, yo, who put this fucking shit together? Listen, I'm, I'm with it. You want to fucking make some bread? You got all these heads. Yo, why am I playing like 122 BPM after Ferry Corson? You know what I mean? I started with the fucking uh, Quick Sound record on Twisted. Ferry Corson picked up the needle of his last record and started smashing it all over the fucking record, like, spinning it back. <coughs> it was like he had an epileptic seizure. 
like while holding the needle. Like, and listen, homie's all right with me. But yo, I'm talking about like, like the setup of like, all right, listen, man, like, you know, Sade right after Metallica. Like, come on, dude. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know? Uh, but yeah, I, so I played Creamfields in Istanbul. And then I played some other night there, too. So I guess twice I've been there. Um, dope ass food, you know? I love, the, like, you know, just the, the vibe of it. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's dope. Yeah, um, Marshall said the same about the food. What's that? Marshall says the same about the food. Oh, yeah, I mean, come on. Like, in New York, you get fucking banging Turkish food. Uh, yeah, man. It's, I mean, just, like, that style of food is very up my alley, you know? But, um, but yeah, yeah, I did Creamfields, and then, yeah, one other gig. I mean, I have some stories about that night, but not, not for this crowd. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Man, fuck. It was all the dream. Um, so, yeah, man. Uh, where did I go after Turkey? I don't even know. I was somewhere before missing some flight. You know what I mean? All fucked and coked out of my mind. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I guess that whole rant means I do like Turkey. But I did not like playing after Ferry Corson. And with all due respect, as much as I could muster up, for Ferry Corsten. Um, it was just an odd thing, you know what I mean? Like, fucking, like, what the fuck is going on, dude? But, uh, yeah, festival. Can't call it. Yeah, in Istanbul, the same thing happened to me. I was playing, I was playing after a local psychedelic trance DJ. Yeah, and, fantastic. Uh, yeah. I fit right in. Unbelievable. Like love. <laughs> and it was like, Nobody on the dance floor was um, global gathering main stage. Yeah. And uh, it's like there was nobody in the dance floor. And the guy was playing psychedelic trance. And uh, yeah. after 10 minutes, minutes I started. Like? What is psychedelic trance like? I mean, is it just like, how, first of all, how fast is that shit? Psychedelic trance. And what makes it psychedelic? Like, is it trippy? Is it all fucked up? Like, shadows and shapes and shit? I don't know. I never understand that music. Well, I mean, well, how fast is psychedelic trance? Like normally, like 135, 140, 150. Like I don't. I'm asking. 150. It's like 150 or something like 150? it. 50. Yeah, it's very fast. Come on, they're already fucked up right there. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. that's a little too fast. But um, I don't know. Too. It's what they, it's like a bunch of white people with dreadlocks, right? <laughs> <laughs> going to go and shit. <laughs> yeah, man, fuck it. Yeah, listen, I love mushrooms, but fuck, man. Um, but yeah, yeah, again, no disrespect to white people with dreads, but kind of. Um, so you you were, you had to play after some psychedelic trans fuck, right? Yeah, I had to play after him, and uh, when I started, it's, it's like tribal house, and right. after... 10 minutes, the dance floor was full. So, when you were playing, it was full, that, but when he, we, he was playing, it wasn't full? There was no one. Yeah, yeah well. In the global gathering main stage, there was no one. Fuck. Hey, man. I mean, whoever's fucking doing these lineups needs to check themselves a bit. You know what I mean? Like, what 150 to i don't know is that what people like like i don't know i want some continuity in a night you know what i mean like you know listen man i spent money on drugs fucking get this right you know what i mean so i don't know what if people are like oh yeah yeah it's great this this guy plays at 150 bpm let's put on like thievery corporation right after him like do people actually like it i don't get it but if people like it must be happening for a fucking reason right like, why do people do these kind of lineups? You know what I mean? If I, think, I don't what, understand, what they do is, huh? What they do is they just look at the names right. and uh, they just decide about the names. How they many say, likes they have on Facebook and shit and Insta? No, on the gram on the motherfucking gram. maybe, <laughs> or who is more popular, right. and they put them in the late hours. 
So yeah. they did not they don't think about the sound or progress about the night. Right. They decided they decided they judge it about the every every single DJ set is a different show. Not they a get motherfuckers in the door, right? Like it's, they just want heads buying tickets and like you're like okay that's cool you know because i listen i don't even know what fucking psychedelic trance is but the thing is is like my homies probably don't either maybe some you know what i mean but like i don't know like i i, I just I, i listen to house music at, at a certain tempo but like to like i i i, I don't know man i'm gonna just sit here and rant but And now I'm not going to be able to go to sleep because I'm going to try and figure out why the fuck people do this dumbass shit. But yeah, I guess they're just making bread, right? Like this guy's <laughs> famous. This guy's famous. Let's have him play right after each other. <laughs> fuck off. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Everyone's techno anyway, right? Techno. Fucking motherfuckers don't even know what techno is. But uh, all right, cool. What next question? <laughs> Am I walking, I'm walking around too much? Am I bothering people? <laughs> people asking about your what um, people sorry uh, people asking about what do you say for the new beginners? You know, for people starting new music, what do what do you like, advice? Them? Like what would advice? I advise? Yeah, advice. 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 What's that? Like advice for young people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, keep it real. Like, whatever you do, just do it right, man. You know what I mean? We all know what's right and wrong. Um, I mean, at least I think so. Like, you know, if you're making psychedelic trance at 150 BPM, like, I don't have much advice for you except don't do it. But if you do do it, <laughs> Do it right, motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, just be about it. Um, and, you know, like, it, the thing is, is that, like, this won't exist unless people continue to push art and to make shit and, like, walk the line between finance and art. And, like, it's dope to make bread doing shit that you like to do. But, like... Listen, I this is my life. Like this, I don't know motherfucking kids, but mad people got kids. You want your kids here and whack shit? Keep making whack shit, motherfucker. Like you want your kids to grow up dope in a dope city and be like, yeah, this is fly. Like and smart, then make fly shit. You know what I mean? Like you got to keep it going. If you don't, it doesn't exist anymore. Then your kids are gonna be whack. So I'm not a kid. But you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, just what you do, do it fucking right. And yeah. just, like, don't get sucked up into this whole scene, man. You know what I mean? Like, it's... Do a lot of mushrooms and make dope shit. That's what I would say. <laughs> yeah? You know? For real. Yeah, sure, like, What's that? Uh, one, one, it's a classic, maybe a boring question for you. Okay. Um, people asking, what do you use to make music? Uh, it's mostly DSPs or analog stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now, like me and Steph, we did a lot. We had me and Steph had outboard stuff. We had a nice studio, uh, but we dumped everything to digital, you know, and just like mixed down in, in the computer. But like, you know, now it's it's the same thing. But like a lot of like kind of weird, just like. Um, Just, just cool, like, outboard stuff and synths that are, like, I don't know, like, a little unique, you know? Um, so, yeah, that's that's it. We still dump everything in. Yeah, yeah, everything. Me and Noam, we dump everything in the computer. Um, yeah, I haven't been in New York so for, like, six days, so he got a bunch of new equipment, some mics and stuff. We're still rocking out and making stuff. We have... Uh, My studio where I'm at is linked to New York. A little glitchy, but, like, it works. But uh, Ableton and some dope, like, outboard stuff, you know? Um, when we do vocals, we do them generally doing them somewhere, recording them somewhere else. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, I, I can post a picture of the studio um, in Brooklyn. And uh, yeah, heads, you know, I, I could post it up to you and you can post it up so heads can see what we're working with. Here, it's just like where I'm at now is just a laptop and, uh, you know, speakers, a, a MIDI controller, you know, soft sense. But really, I'm just like working off the stuff in New York where I'm at now. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, like I said, I'll post a picture. Nothing fancy. It's like, it's mad small. It's like small as me and Stefan's studio. Like me and Steph had like, you know, like maybe like 20 outboard pieces, you know. And, uh, you know, now we, me, me and Noam probably, we have probably like 10. You know what I mean? But like, they're cool. It's cool shit. So yeah, and then Ableton and just mushrooms. <laughs> Psychedelics. That's a bit. Psychedelic trains. Hi, how are you? Huh? Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? It's the best ones. What is it? Hi, how are you? Hi. It's the best mushrooms. So yeah, how many people uh, have how you got? How Sorry? How many people we got here? Is that all these things on the bottom? That's people just saying what's up and checking in? Yeah, it's like 240. 200 million, did you say? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. As we are superstars. fucking famous. Yeah. I've As got we are all the likes. Yeah, man. I pay uh, 0 0.01 euro per like, so... <laughs> Catch up. <laughs> so everyone is like Your grandma. Yeah. Like <laughs> What's that? And one more thing. One more question. Okay. Another classic one. Uh, what do you think about transition to vinyl to digital one? So what do I think about vinyl to digital? Vinyl to digital transition. What man, do you think about good, it? Man, fucking USBs are mad light. Fucking carrying 300 records to a show, three shows a week. Fuck that shit. Skipping shit, cocaine all over my records. Like, fuck off. No, man. I Records are cool, but it's like, I don't know. Like, I, people are like, oh, I've only played vinyl. I'm just like, all right, man, that's cool. Fuck, I don't, know. I don't give a fuck. Like, is it good vinyl, by the way? So, I don't know. I, I think it's fine. Like, Sound-wise, I'm not stuck on, like, vinyl being, like, a million times better. It has a feel. It's got a smell. I grew up on it, you know? So, but I'm all good with just, like, play something dope. Like, I don't give a fuck how you play it. Just make it make it fresh. You know what I mean? Play something real nice. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. What, like, there's a bunch of people like, oh, I only play vinyl. I'm like, all right, man. That's cool. Thanks for letting me know. Like, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's, it's like, is that the route? Like, there's a lot of people like this? There are a lot of people like this. Like, they say vinyl is better or better DJs are playing vinyls. And yeah. I mean, what what, what about digital. if something you really love doesn't come out on vinyl? Do they not play yeah. it? Yeah. In fact, that's how I started playing CDs, CDRs. Right. Many of my friends like you or... Omid or other people was sending me tracks that are not pressed to vinyl and there is no way to play it. So right. I started playing on CDJs. Right. So what like your so your intention to be super cool and like righteous over outweighs no, no, my... like you just really want to play something good and it's not all vinyl? You know what I mean? Yeah, my intention That's is playing good music. Fun. It's never it's never about the media, you know? Sing that shit to me, cousin like as long as it's fucking fresh, like vinyl only DJs, I don't know. Fuck, do your thing, man. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's kind of corny to like limit yourself, but I don't know. Maybe I do some corny ass shit too, you know. So, what else? But yeah, fuck them, man. You want to carry that shit? Fucking carry them. <laughs> well, we are reaching to Instagram's time limit. Okay. And uh, we're last words that you want to say to people watching us 
I mean, just keep it funky. You know what I mean? Do your thing with an 89 swing. Um, yeah, and, just, and try to keep it kind of real. You know what I mean? I know it's an industry, but come on, man. You know what I mean? Like, your mortgage payments ain't that high. It's not faking the funk. Um, yeah, that's it. Cool. Thank you for having me. Uh, sorry, yeah. everybody, for walking around. If I was sitting down, I'd fall the fuck asleep, not because you are boring, because I stayed up all night. Um, yeah, I'm about to jump That's up in bed. Name. Watch some That's your name. Huh? Up all night. That's your name. That's, That's your name. name. I up all night. night. Yes. So, yeah, check that Have shit out. Um, yeah, man, keep in touch. We'll talk. I'll get you those parts for yeah, yeah. the remix. You know that. Um, yeah, I'm looking for the parts for the... I know. I look at my laptop and I want to throw up sometimes. You know what I mean? I'm just like, Ugh. fuck this fucking thing. It's got letters on it and numbers. Fuck it. Um, so, yeah, I'll, but I will get them to you. I, I, you know what? Honestly, okay. I think they're on my server just sitting in a file and I'm just being stupid motherfucking lazy. So, I swear, I'm going to get them to you. Like, what's today? Yeah. Thursday? It's Thursday. Yeah, next week. <laughs> <laughs> but I swear I it really, really will alright it takes time so thank so you so have a good night time, brother no we thank you for joining joining us for tonight yeah, it's, it's thank my you for listening hope you hopefully heads liked it and shit you know yeah alright so have a good night alright well it's morning where I'm at so yeah <laughs> Time for bed, though. All right, brother. See you. See you, everybody. See you. Ciao.